All right, guys, I'm going to talk in this lesson, we're going to look at one of the last ideas about probability, and it's called expected value. And um, the idea with expected value is this. So we've talked about probability means this. If you um, have a um, experimental probability, so I start flipping a coin, in the short term, I have no idea the percent. It's not going to necessarily be 50-50, but in the long term, it, it approaches the theoretical. So if you flip a coin a million times, you'd expect it to start approaching 50-50. But in the short term, you're not sure. Well, we're going to add a little bit to that idea today. And um, it's this. I kind of left this out of the last one, and maybe I should have just gone for it and mentioned I was trying to save the idea. But if you flip a coin, you literally have no idea whether it's going to be heads or tails. It's truly random. And um, if you take a dice out of your pocket, you roll the dice, it is truly a random event. I don't know what's going to happen. What I think is interesting about that is something that is random in the short term somehow in the long term turns into something you can predict. So that's interesting. But here's the idea. If I roll the dice and I don't know what's going to happen, haven't ever since high school, don't we call I don't know X? If we don't know what something is, we call it I don't know. Well, in this section, we're calling this a random variable because it's tied to a random event. And so, unlike in high school, where that X could represent maybe any number in the world, it could have been anything from negative infinity to infinity, in this sense, it, the, this random event, if it's a coin flip, it's only heads or tails. That's all. There's nothing else. So it is random, and it is X, but it isn't the same thing as we see. Like, it can't just be any number. So in this story here, this is the story of a coin flip. X is a random variable, and the only possible things it could be. We don't know which one. It might be heads or it might be tails. And then over here, we've added the probability of those things happening. So let me do it again for a coin flip. Okay, and if you see what I've done here, this is a random variable. This, in math language, is the story of a dice roll. If I were to say to you, hey, and I want you to write me the story of a dice roll, and you were an English major, you'd get out and you'd write a paragraph, and you'd tell me all the things, you get the dice out of your pocket, you don't know what side you're going to get when you roll it, but in the long term, the probability is one six for each of those. Well, in math language, math language is kind of like shorthand. It, it's like, instead of writing in English, we're writing in math. And this right here tells me everything about a dice roll. It tells me, the X tells me this is a random event, so I don't know what's going to happen when I do it. This tells me all the things that could occur. And over here, I have the probabilities of each of, each of those things as they occur. They're all one-sixth. Okay, now this thing here, not only does it tell the story of a dice roll, but this is called a probability distribution. And it's a really, really, really big idea and really important. So. A probability distribution tells you all the things that can happen and all of their probabilities. Now, if it's all the things that can happen, everything here had better add to one, or this is not a real probability distribution. This couldn't be over one or 100%. It can't be under it either. It has to be 100%. It has to be all the things that could occur. You also couldn't have a negative probability in here. That stuff is impossible. So a valid probability distribution tells a story about a random event, and it has to have all the things that can happen and all the probabilities, and they have to add to one. Now, you'll see this on the worksheet, but it does this. So if you um, multiply these across, I'm not going to do them all, you create this column called xp of x, okay? And if you added up that column, so I multiply across 1 times 1, 6, 2 times 2, 6, 3 times 3, 6, 4 times 1, 6, you create this column. If you then added that column, you create something called the expected value. Now, this is a story. So this is the math story about rolling a dice. And what the question we ask next is, well, what do we expect to happen if we got a dice out from our pocket and we rolled it? Well, what do you expect to happen? It's the mean. It's the exact same thing. There's nothing different about this. And you can do this on your calculator. I'd love it if you'd stop the video after I introduce this here and try it. This is, we've done this already. This is list one. Here's all the things that can happen, but they happen at different frequencies, at different weights. This is list two. 
So list one, list two. So put these in your calculator, try this, and remember when you do it, if you have an older calculator, you're going to put in one variable stats, L1 comma L2. If you have the newer one that has a table, your table's going to come up and you're going to say, hey, look at list one, and you're going to look at the frequency from list two. So if you care, pause the video and try that. I'm going to tell you what you're going to get here in just a second. Okay, so you are the expected value is nothing but the mean. It's exactly the same thing. So the expected value for this, I think you get 3.5. I'm doing this from memory, and I don't have my calculator out in front of me. And the standard deviation is 1.7. So what does this mean? It means that when you play this game, in the long run, or you say on average, I can expect to get 3.5. So why am I saying in the long run or on average? Because this is probability. When I roll it one time, I'm not sure I'm going to get 3.5, or if I do it a few times. It's if I did this many, 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 many times, I can expect to get 3.5 as my average. This is a theoretical probability. Okay, so that and the other thing here, that doesn't seem to make any sense, right? This is called a discrete probability distribution. The only choices are numbers I could count up. We talked about this at the beginning of the course. There's discrete situations and continuous, like your height is continuous because you're not really six foot. You're 6.0001354. There's an infinite number of decimal places. Well, this is a discrete probability distribution because there's not an infinite number. There's six things here. We can count those up. That's the whole thing. So, but what's weird about it is that 3.5 isn't even one of our choices. So how could we average 3.5? And I understand your concern. It makes my head spin a little bit too. But the idea is that we can get is that it's okay. And it just tells us that we could expect to be somewhere between 3 and 4 on average, somewhere around there, okay? So if you were to explain this, I say, hey, explain the expected value of this situation. You'd say, well, on average, if I roll a dice, I could expect to get 3.5. The standard de deviation just tells you that on average how much this varies up or down. Okay, now make this exactly the same as I did it in class. Now this is a loaded dice and I'm not going to have you do it. You could if you want to pause and give it a try. This dice is loaded. And if you did this, it's a probability distribution. It's valid because it adds up to one, and it's discrete because I don't, don't have an infinite number of choices. I just have these six. If you put this in your calculator, here's what you're going to get. Now, 4.5, what happened? Well, what you could expect if you rolled this dice over and over and over again is to get something around here. Now, why did the two dice change? It was here, and now it's here. Do you see what happened? Because the dice is weighted, we have been pulled towards that side that we can expect to happen more often. So on average, if I rolled this weighted dice, I could expect to get 4.5. Okay. Um, am I leaving anything out here? Uh, yeah, I got one more thing to show you. All right. So there, you're going to see another kind of situation as well where it's like what happens in a casino. If you go into a casino, the casino operators have found the expected value for every single game in the casino. They know every single game. And what they know is that on average, in the long run, the game should be go against you, and it should go for them. Every single game, or that game is not going to be in the casino. And so take it like this. Suppose it costs you $20. This will make this a raffle. It costs you $20 to enter a raffle. Okay? And here are the choices. You got to pay 20 bucks. And there's a 95% chance you don't win a thing. There's a 4% chance you win your money back. And there's a 1% chance that you win the raffle and you get the $10,000. Now, this is a probability distribution. It works and it's true. And if it's about a game, we put the, or a lottery or something in the casino, we put the money here. And notice it's perfectly fine to put in we lose money or we gain money. So it's okay to have this negative 20. And here's my very last thought. 
if you look at the expected value that you calculate here, I don't know what the actual one is for this game, but it's possible if you get negative $1.75. It means that if you played this game on average for a really, really, really long time, the average player loses $1.75. But suppose the expected value had turned out to be uh, $1.25. That means that if you play this many, many times, the average player can expect to win $1.25. So if it's a negative expected value for you, you don't want to play this because on average you're expected to lose $1.75 every time you play. If it's in your favor, well, this would be a game you should play because on average you can expect to win money. Now that's everything you need to get through that activity. Um, if you need some help, just ask.